Hello again, everyone. Today I am here with a very small Jackson's haul. And part of the reason why these things are small or, you know, not, not very many is because the main purchase in this order was this very large palette. Um, so this is a, a big Jackson's brand porcelain palette and they were on sale recently and I had been wanting to get one of these for quite some time. Uh, I was kind of inspired by Irit Landgraf here on YouTube. She showed hers and I was like, yeah, that's kind of the one I've been looking at. And because there was a sale, it was actually a pretty good deal because normally these can be almost a hundred dollars and it was uh, almost half that. So I figured I would jump on it. So it has this plastic cover and you can't see it because it's too big to fit in the camera lens, but um, so it has this plastic cover, which frankly, I'm not sure I would use too much, but it might be nice just to keep dust out of my watercolors or whatever. Um, and then it has all of these individual wells all the way around that are quite deep. I don't think I realized they were this deep, um, but that's nice because then you can, um, well, you could use a lot of paint in here, but you also could create quite a nice wash just in the little uh, well, which I think is pretty nice. And these are pretty generous uh, as well. And there's four of them, but this, so this is set up kind of like a color wheel. So you could set it up like that. And that's actually my plan. I plan to set it up sort of like a color wheel. Um, I have to think about what colors I want to put in here because this would obviously be for home painting, but uh, I love painting off of a porcelain palette. It's quite the treat. Uh, it, it, I think it just makes the whole painting process go quite a lot better. So that's why I got this, but I'm going to put this off to the side and then I'm going to deal with the small amount of other things that I got from Jackson's, but, um, I don't think they have the sale going on anymore, but this is quite, quite the quality <laughs> item. I was pretty impressed. It weighs a ton. So it's like really hurting my arm here as I'm holding it up, but, um, I mean, that's kind of what you want with porcelain. You want it to be pretty hefty. You know, it won't go anywhere when you're working with it on your table. So I'm just putting that on the floor for now. Um, and the surface is just amazing for mixing. So that's that's why you get a porcelain palette. And what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something else about the porcelain palette. No, I think that was it, but it is quite heavy. And I think that that is why my shipping was so much on this order. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, it was, it still made the, um, watercolor palette still a decent price, even with the shipping factored in, but it, it was a lot for shipping because of the weight. All right. So I do have a few other items and these were mostly things that I had sitting around in my cart or they, um, they were out of stock and then they went back into rest went back into stock. <laughs> so I got them. Um, they had a pastel sale a while back and I actually missed the pastel sale. So as, <laughs> cause I was like, eh, you know, I guess I need pastels, but not, not super a lot. Cause I have a ton of them. Um, but I was looking for some specific colors. So basically I pared it down to just two that I would get. And I'll show you what this one is once we start swatching. So I'm going to swatch these, um, soft past pastels are always kind of messy. So you're be prepared <laughs> for that. And these three items were specifically things that had been out of stock for quite a while. And uh, when I saw they were in stock, I figured I would get them. One is the peach colored, yeah, peach pastel colored Molotow 15 millimeter acrylic marker. So I've really, really been enjoying these large acrylic markers. They're, they're really fun for making really bold uh, marks on paper. And I've really been enjoying that. So I, I, I wanted to get this color the last time I got a big batch of them, but uh, it was out of stock. So I added that one. And then these two are what's called liquid pencil. And I got them both in blue because that was kind of the color, the color that I wanted based on the swatches online. Um, and the reason why I have two of them is one is permanent and one is rewettable. And I figured I would have a use for both because, so so basically if you don't know, liquid pencil is kind of like a liquid charcoal. So it, it it's not gonna be like a bright blue, it is gonna be sort of like a charcoal blue. Um, 
and I thought that this might be nice to put down something before putting watercolor over it, which is where the permanent one would come in. And then the rewettable one, I thought I could use it kind of like watercolor. So that's why I tried both. And like I said, these have been out of stock for quite a while. So I decided to grab them. They seem pretty light. So I'm wondering how much I'll actually get out of these. Uh, these are made in Australia. I've been getting actually a lot of art supplies that are made in Australia lately. Um, I just realized I had a tiny little piece of uh, elastic that I'd cut off one of my traveler's notebooks still on the table there. Sorry about that. All right, so let's go ahead and get into swatching these. I am going to be using my standard Pentallic field book, which has watercolor paper. I did have a page that had some room left here. I feel, you know, this is quite a big chunk of real estate here, so I'm actually going to do it on the same page that I've swatched these Schmeka gouache. I kind of wish that I had scooted them over and kind of pre-planned for doing something else on the page, but, you know, sometimes I don't pre-plan, and that's how it goes. All right, so first let's go ahead and get into this giant marker. So you do have to shake them quite a bit to get them mixed. And this one's kind of nice because you can see the liquid in it. So basically it's just like acrylic ink that is in these markers. And um, the reason why I wanted some pastel colors or, or what you would normally call convenience colors is, um, actually I'm gonna have to cut that. Um, because you, you, it's really kind of hard to mix colors when they're in marker form. So it's kind of good to, oh, wrong way. It's kind of good to have sort of the color you already want to have in there. So let's go ahead and get the cap off. And this worked pretty well last time, so I'm going to try this again, which is pushing this down to kind of get whatever pressure is built up in there out. But it might take a little while for this to get started. Um, and I did do a video on the channel not too long ago about um, comparing different 15 millimeter markers and basically how long they, it took to get them started and how well they flow and that sort of thing. I'll put a link down below to that. Actually, I'm going to try pumping it and see if that moves. Yeah, I can see it coming. Uh, so just feel free to watch me pumping my marker <laughs> for a little while. Um, it's coming though. And uh, as part of that video, I really kind of determined that uh, the Molotov markers are kind of the best. I mean, I, I, of all the markers I've experienced lately, these are definitely my favorite acrylic markers. They just flow really well. They don't have as many issues as some other markers do. Okay, so we're pretty much there on this. So you get this really nice, broad, smooth stroke there you can do some mark making there like this i do i do this mark quite a bit with the whole side of it there and that makes a really neat mark and that's a really beautiful color and i think it'll be really good in mixed media work this is actually a color that i've been mixing a lot in other acrylics it might be the one i usually mix might be a little bit pinker than this but I think that this is going to work well with that. And I just turned it that way so that you could see it without the glare. And I will put it closer once I'm done with everything here. I think I'm gonna leave the pastels for last. Hmm. No, I'm gonna do the pastels now because I do wanna get a paintbrush out to deal with these liquid pencil things. So this is a uh, soft pastel from Unison, which is probably one of the most expensive soft pastel brands. It's made in England and it is, what is this color? Does it say what this color is? Um, I don't have my invoice handy, but it's basically some sort of uh, like warm brown color. Yeah, oh, that's exactly what I was looking for. So it's a little bit on the rosy tone. I'm just gonna blow this off. So it's a little on the rosy side. It's really, really pretty. It's a really good neutral. I've, I've been looking for some warmer neutrals to use. For now, I'm just gonna put this back in the box, but I will put it in my, um, I have a little set of drawers where I keep my pastels. And then this one here is by Sennelier. They sent it in a box with just the one in there. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of odd that there would be 
I wonder. So it's weird. It seems like this end might have broken off, but I don't know. Uh, so let me go ahead and peel this. Oh, I guess that's how you're supposed to do that. Interesting. I don't have many Sennelier pastels, soft pastels, so I'm not quite sure how they wrapped them. Um, and also I think the, the ones that I have, I, I got from someone else, so they were already partially used. So this is indigo. I kind of wanted to have a dark blue because um, I don't have a lot of them. Oh, that's really nice. That's really, really nice. Um, what's interesting is I'm seeing much less powder left over on the paper from the Sennelier than I did with the Unison. And one way that you can blend is you can just do it right on the paper like that. Although now I'm seeing more. Okay, so there you go. That's the uh, Indigo Sennelier Soft Pastel. And they have all kinds of different numbers for different pastels. So I'm not gonna get into that. And quite frankly, I don't really remember <laughs> which one this is. So, you know, just, to, and it's hard to tell from the, from the swatches that they have online because you're, you're not gonna see what the real color is going to be really, because it's not the actual swatch that they have, at least not on Jackson's. But, um, but, I, but I, yeah, I've been really liking using soft pastels and I've been like mixing them with acrylic medium so that I almost turned them into a paint, which is really fun. Um, but they, I mean, basically they are just pigment in a stick with very little binder. So that's nice. I realized that I had this way out so that you could see that palette. So let me actually zoom in there. So now I'm going to try working with these. Let me see if there's a seal on them. Yes, there is. Okay, so how do I break the seal? I think you might be able to, uh, I remember having a tr having trouble with this kind of thing. I'm gonna try this little round thing to kind of to see if I can break the seal with that. Mm, I don't think that's gonna work. So I'm gonna need, um, let me just try this little knife here. It's not ideal, but, ooh, okay. Since I don't have anything else, that's gonna have to work. And what I'll do is I'll just get what's on my knife off onto my paper. I'm just gonna go up on the edge here because I don't want that to get stuck to my knife. So then I'm gonna wipe off my knife and then open the other one. That actually came off pretty easy. And so that is the permanent one. So I don't wanna leave that too long because I wanna make sure that I can um, wet it with water and then try to see, see whether it truly is permanent, basically. Um, but I don't wanna wait too long for it to get permanent already. And then here is the rewettable one. Yeah, both are clearly highly under pressure. I'm also interested to see if there's any visible difference in the um, color between the the permanent and the rewettable. Okay, I think I got most of that there. I'm gonna do one final wipe off of my knife. I never know what the best way to handle these tubes are that have seals like that, but this seems to work okay. All right, so I have a pot of water off to the side, although I have not opened it. So there we go. And then I have a paintbrush here. This is just a Princeton Velvet Touch watercolor brush. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna move it this way and let's go with the permanent first. So let's see, oh, that's actually really nice. And you probably don't need as much as I put on here. I really just was trying to use the, um, the amount that got onto my knife. So it looks like it goes a long way. So you can actually get quite a bit out of this. If you want it to be really opaque, you might uh, have to use more, but this definitely seems like it'll work pretty well. And as you can see, it's kind of like a bluish charcoal color. It's not, it's not like a deep blue, but I really like this sort of almost black blue. That's why I got that color. Okay, so let's try the rewettable one. And that's very interesting because this one does have a different texture when I am wetting it with the brush. And I'm pretty sure you, you always wanna use water with this just so that it flows. But yeah, this seems to have a little bit more gum Arabic maybe. I think that's what they use in there. And 
there just might have been less here on the paper, but it definitely seems like this is a little bit bluer. The permanent one is a little bit bluer and uh, flows a little bit better, which is kind of interesting. So I'm gonna let these dry here for, for just a minute while I chat about some other things. <laughs> and then hopefully, yeah, things dry really fast here. So I'm hoping that will be the case again this time. Um, but I'll just do a little recap while we're waiting while we're waiting for that. And uh, this one is almost dry, this acrylic color. It's actually really, really nice. I was a little worried when I saw the cap because I was like, whoa, that's really orange. So it is definitely not as orange as the cap. It is more <laughs> pastel-like, which, which is what I was looking for, not this orange. Um, but yeah, because the, the swatch on the website looked more similar to this, which I kind of wanted, which I got, thankfully. All right, and here we have that sort of reddish, warm brown. I've kind of obscured it a little bit because I mixed the two colors a little bit. Uh, you can also mix these with your finger. I try not to do that too much with these because, you know, you don't know what pigments are going to be not good for you. But, um, but this is one thing you can do. And sometimes, you know, your finger is the best tool. And um, I would just recommend that if you do use your fingers, please wash your hands very soon after so that you get all that pigment off of your hands. You don't want that soaking into your skin at all. Um, and like I was saying, so the soft pastels are pretty much just pure pigment with very little binder. So what you could do is um, add water to them and move them around a little bit with water. Here, I'll kind of show you what that looks like. And I was kind of surprised at how nice that works. Um, this is quite a wet brush. And I'm just gonna do this side. But look at that, I mean, it almost it almost is like a watercolor stick. And it looks really, really nice. Because basically all that's in here is gum arabic, very little, and the uh, pigment. So it looks quite nice when it is, um, when you add water. The only problem is that when it dries, it's gonna be smudgy. That is the one thing. So I'm gonna try and wet this as well. I'm probably gonna blend a little bit, but um, but yeah, I think the Sennelier acted, oh, sorry, there you go, acted a little bit better with the water, but but you can also mix them like this. So that's, that's also really nice. You can kind of add them to watercolor paintings and you can get a really nice effect. You can always um, spray fixative on them if you don't want them to um, smudge. And I have a few like collage papers that I covered with, uh, so I covered with a soft pastel and then I added water and they're a little smudgy, but not crazy, crazy smudgy. Uh, it doesn't seem to be as smudgy as if you just put it on the paper. But what I really like about this is that you get this, this really nice granulation quality because you know, it's powdered pigment. So you're essentially getting a larger, um, a larger pigment particle here than you would in most watercolor paints. And there's some really neat stuff going on right here with that. These two colors actually look really nice together. Um, and this indigo looks almost black when you add the water to it because you can still see here it's blue and here it looks almost black probably because it's kind of diluted for one thing and I'm not sure if the color will shift when it dries but I'm thinking it just maybe a little bit more charcoal-like when you add water. That's really nice. Okay, and then here we have, because I think, okay, so this half of this has dried. This part here is pretty much dry. Um, so definitely the permanent is definitely more blue than the rewettable, and that's still wet. So I'm gonna try not to, to <laughs> mess with the wet parts here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to pull this color out. Oh, so that's like completely permanent. Although I'm getting a little bit, if I, if I rub it more, and that partially could be because it's not fully, fully dry. Yeah, cause like if you go over here, it's pretty much dry. 
Uh, so if you're gonna, you know, do something like watercolor over, just make sure it's fully dry. And then let's see the difference with this one. Yeah, it's definitely re-wetting like you would expect. So then you could, you know, re-wet it, move it around the page. Let's try here as well, where it was a little more dry. Yeah. Yeah, so you could definitely pull it out and then, you know, you could get rid of your edge lines and that sort of thing. So fun things to play with. All right. So that's all I had for you today. And uh, this and then the <laughs> the ceramic palette or porcelain palette, which I probably won't be showing again on the channel even if, when I start using it, but maybe, we'll, we'll see. It's just very unwieldy and very large, so it's kind of hard to show on the camera. Um, but I'm really excited about it because it's it really is quite the luxury to be able to mix with um, with a porcelain palette. Okay, well that truly is it. I hope that you uh, subscribe to my channel to keep track of new videos when they come out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.